As I stated in my Extreme Rules 2015 preview show, it's really hard for the WWE to have a bad Extreme Rules pay-per-view. You're coming off of the heels of WrestleMania when you factor in the stipulations for some of the matches. It's really hard to have a bad show. You have Several stories usually that are well-developed. In many cases, they reach their culmination, their big blow-off point, if you will. And again, you throw in the stipulations of the matches and the fact that you can do more. There's times where Extreme Rules ends up being a better show than WrestleMania. However, it's also hard, I think, for the WWE to have a really great Extreme Rules show for certain reasons, most especially because of those stipulations on some of these matches, it can make the show easily good, but really hard to be great. Uh, when I look at this year's Extreme Rules, in my opinion, and don't let it be said that I never say anything positive about this company, I thought this show was solid, and most certainly in my mind better than WrestleMania 31 in terms of an actual overall viewing experience. I thought the structure and flow of the show was very good. The matches felt like they had the appropriate time. The matches were slotted on the appropriate place of the card. Things flowed together really, really well, in my opinion. I really, in particular, liked the usage of interviews and backstage segments to kind of break up the monotony of the show and give us some more in-depth view on certain characters, something that they could incorporate better, frankly, at WrestleMania, getting away from that love of the video package. So I thought the show was put together really well. I thought it was produced relatively well. I thought the structure worked. I thought the flow really worked well. The biggest knock that I have on the WWE, and if it's something I used to hammer ROH on, I most certainly am going to hammer the WWE on because for them, unlike a Mickey Mouse operation like ROH, they have no excuse. There is no justification. The WWE does not get a free pass. This is the second straight pay-per-view where I had multiple, multiple issues being able to watch Extreme Rules via whatever streaming device I wanted to use. My laptop, my Schleg Daddy 6000 TV, it didn't matter. I had problems all throughout the night. The shit skipping, the shit stopping, the shit rewinding back, the whole thing just going out. This is unacceptable. Just because you're only charging me $9.99 a month doesn't mean you're allowed to provide me a $9.99 a month type of product. And I most certainly expect if I'm paying money, whatever type of money that is per month, in this case $9.99, I expect that shit to work when I need it to work. And when I'm sitting there devoting three hours of my Sunday night to your shit, you best make sure your shit fucking works. And frankly, that's probably what's keeping me from rating the show a whole lot better. Because again, that is a problem, a significant problem, and a big part of the viewing experience. All the dipshits they used to sit there and say, well, that's no big deal when it comes to our ways. No, fuck that. That's a whole part of the viewing experience when you're watching it at home. Well, it most certainly is when it comes to the WWE. They should be better. They should know better. It's been over a year now. There are no more fucking excuses. Fix your fucking network. Fix your shit. Now that I've talked about some of that stuff, I suppose it's time to actually talk about the matches that happened on this card. Thank God the WWE doesn't listen to you in certain cases because let me state this as clearly and concisely as I possibly can. There are several of you that I believe didn't like this show and didn't enjoy this show. How much worse would this show have fucking been if the WWE had listened to you and had Daniel Bryan main event WrestleMania 31 and then, God forbid, beat Brock Lesnar for the freaking title? You know, you had Daniel Bryan penciled in for a match here defending his IC title, and of course he couldn't wrestle, so he wasn't fucking there. You know... How much worse would this show have been if the fucking main event for the title was in flux or in serious question? But the WWE, I think, did a good job of trying to work around the lack of Daniel Bryan by putting the right match on the pre-show, and that's Wade Barrett versus Neville. This match was good. This match was fun. It was a good kind of introductory showcase piece for Neville on pay-per-view. I, in particular, like Wade Barrett's cut look. Um, you know, you could sit there and talk about the fact that, you know, you're not wanting to fuck them and you're not wanting to do this or that, but it does matter and it does make a difference because it's like somebody sitting there and giving you a bunch of fitness tips if they've got a beer belly. 
How much more likely are you to take somebody seriously or give them credibility if they have a six-pack in their freaking cut? Well, at least when it comes to both Wade Barrett and Neville, compared to some other guys on the freaking roster, it looks like these guys at least actually care to hit the damn gym. They actually care about how they look. And these two guys had really good most importantly of all, chemistry in the ring. Well, these guys told a pretty decent story. I thought it was the right idea to have Neville go over here. But you still got something else planned for Wade Barrett down the road. Maybe he wins back the IC title, which is something that is possible. And you've set up potentially something between him and Neville down the road. It was a good pre-show match and the right match to be on the pre-show. And then with the actual main show, they kicked it off right with Dean Ambrose versus Luke Harper in the Chicago Street Fight in. I was hoping they were going to do something outside of the box. I was hoping that they were going to do more than just have some lame-ass street fight in the ring. And the WWE at least understood that that was something that they needed to do here. I did like how this match started off in the sense that Ambrose is going right after him, not the slowdown bullshit. And then eventually, as you work your way to the back, you know, they're going all over the place as they should. And then they get in the freaking car and off they go. Now, of course, there's certain fans like me that are sitting there and expecting them to go uh, Piper Gold Dust back from WrestleMania 12. We really didn't get that. But to the fans that were sitting there and chanting for CM Punk and booing this shit, this is the same type of shit, one, that you would have applauded and cheered for in the Attitude Era. And number two, get over it! CM Punk is done. He is gone. It has been 15 fucking months. Let it go. He's over it. You should be too. It's stupid. And of course, the people of Rosemont, not Chicago, but fucking Rosemont, where all state is, are fucking stupid. Anyways, I was a little disappointed, though, that while the WWE seemed to kind of go out of the box, it was... All of a sudden, they're gone, and then a half hour later, they're back. You've never really shown anything actually happened. They just got in the car, and then they came back. Why Harper's in the backseat and Ambrose is driving? Who the fuck knows? Why is Harper rolling out if Ambrose is driving? Who the fuck knows? It was something that was good in theory, and at least the WWE tried to do something a little different. But... It kind of disappointed me just in the sense that it could have been so much more. At least Dean fucking Ambrose won a pay-per-view match, and that is something that I could be happy about. But again, it's, it's one of these things that it started off good, and the concept was good, but it should have been so much more. I almost wonder if this whole match should have just happened in the actual city of Chicago and not... Not in Rosemont, you know, the actual city of Chicago. Fucking, even if you want to, try and get it worked out where you can have them fight in O'Hare. It's right over there, so why the fuck not? You know, maybe that would have been the way to go. Maybe have them go on the north side and go to Wrigley Field. Uh, I wouldn't go to the south side so much to the old, <laughs> to the U.S. cellular if they didn't want to get shot. Um, but, again, it could have been more than what it was, but it was okay. It was at least the WWE trying to do something at least somewhat creative. I'm still trying to figure out how a kiss my arse match fits into an extreme rules type of stipulation. I guess I'll never figure that out. It didn't really matter to me because this match between Ziggler and Sheamus, I wasn't going to watch. I took Summer out for a walk during this time. She had to get ready for Roman later in the night. Um, but I, we did make it back inside in time to see the finish. And, you know, I, I guess a lot of people don't like it. I actually did. You know, the baby face goes over, but at the same time the heel gets over in a heel type of way, you know, instead of just having Ziggler lose and then doing this on top of it, at least Ziggler won. There's a potentially a purpose to have another match. You know, it's something. And then, like I said, Sheamus, you know, gets over as well. The only thing I didn't like about it was the fact that it was just taking too fucking long to get to the point. It's sitting there, and as it's happened, I'm going, ta 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 hey, Junior! You know, I'm all for the slow buildup sometimes, but sometimes the WWE goes too far and it takes too fucking long and it just becomes aggravating and annoying. Just like having Dolph Ziggler and Sheamus repeatedly wrestle is aggravating and boring. There are a lot of people that think that the tag title match between the New Day and Kid and Cesaro was the match of the night, and frankly, I won't give you a whole lot of grief if you think that. This was really good. This was really fun, and I'm really glad that WWE came to their senses and got this shit off of the pre-show. The tag titles need to stop being that pre-show fodder, and they need to be on the main card. They need to matter. We talk about the mid-card belts and how much they're supposed to matter. Well, why can't the tag team titles fucking matter either? You have all this time and television space to fill. You can't figure out a way to make the tag champions matter, the tag belts matter. I mean, seriously. 
But this was a really, really good match. I thought it was funny as they're chanting, New Day sucks! New Day sucks! <laughs> you know, maybe they've got something here with the New Day on their kind of accidental heel turn. I don't really know if they do or not, frankly. Uh, but I thought the match went really well. I thought the right team went over in the right way. And this was a lot of fun. There is good and there is bad when you work with John Cena. The good is, is that you know if you're a newer, fresher face, before you get to Cena, you're going to get some nice shine. You're going to get some spotlight. And you're going to get built up very nicely. And you're going to make some money along the way. And you're going to see your profile increase and your importance increase. And then you know once you actually get to working with John Cena that your profile is going to increase even more. Your importance is going to increase even more. And you know that, again, you are going to make money. And in this case, you're going to make more money because, in theory, you're working with the top guy. You know, you get nice shine, you get nice spotlight. But then there's the bad of working with John Cena. Is that you know you're ultimately being built up just to be fed to the Cena monster. You know no matter how much you get over, no matter what transpires at the end of the day, you've been there, you've seen this, it's happened, LOL, Cena wins. And then God knows what happens afterwards. Because so often we see it where when somebody gets built up to be fed to the Cena monster, a lot of times there's not a plan for anything for them after the fact. It's like, we just got to get them ready for Cena, and then who knows what fucking happens after that. And that's not a way to make a star out of any damn buddy. And you know here, you're seeing Rusev versus Cena for the U.S. title in this Russian chain match. It is pretty much what you expect it's going to be. The best part of this match, frankly, was at the beginning when you had Rusev touch the turnbuckles and the light's supposed to go red, but it's going fucking green. This light's lighting up. <laughs> I mean, this, this match, it got the crowd there, and I guess that's kind of the cool thing is they came out, you know, with booing Cena, and at the end they're cheering Cena, so they got the crowd there, and it's a hard crowd to get, and that's all fine and good. They got them on the whole USA bullshit and all of that. But again, I just could never get into this match because I knew it was just an exercise in futility. I knew it was just wasting my time. At least it was an attempt in this match because of the style of the match to try and tell a story, and that works all fine and good. But at the end of the day, it's LOL, Cena wins. And then to top it all off, now apparently we're going to get another match between Rusev and Cena at a pay-per-view. Why? Cena's beaten him once for the title. He's beaten him in the rematch. Why do we need to do that again? And yes, you can sit there and say, well, look how good that is that Rusev's working him at a four straight pay-per-view, but he's going to be working him for his third straight loss, and then what the fuck's going to happen to him afterwards? And at this point in time, is this rivalry that good and really that intense and that captivating to where we need a fourth match? No. The blow-off needed to happen here. This should be the end of the matter. Instead, what's going to happen, you're going to get seen in his U.S. Open Challenge every single week, and Rusev will be a second-bit player until we get to playback. Payback, whatever the fuck. So at least I'll say this. The Divas got more than two or three minutes for their title match, and that's fine. And the match itself was okay. You know, it's a positive, I suppose. But here's my question. You have Paige win the number one contender's battle royal, just so that way you could take her out of action with the heel turn by Naomi, so that way Paige can go film a crappy WWE Studios movie. So you've got Naomi now in this new role as a heel, going up against the heel champion in Nikki Bella with her heel sister in Brie Bella, even though there's not really a whole lot of reason for an issue here other than the fact that Naomi's beaten Nikki on a couple of different occasions. That's the whole reason for an issue. And that's part of the whole problem with the Divas division. So much is based off of match crap, and that is it. Not a lot of emotional investment in characters. Not a lot of actual storyline development and you know so on and so forth. It's the same old stuff that I won't get into too much more. But she's going against the heel champions. So you have Naomi work the match as a baby face. But then you're packaging Nikki and Brie Bella as the baby faces for them to use a heel tactic 
for <laughs> Nikki Bella as the heel to go over like the babyface over the heel diva challenger who is actually working as the babyface. Am I the only one that's completely fucking confused as to what the fuck was going on here? I joked in the preview show that Roman Reigns versus Big Show was truly going to be a last man or last fan standing match because who the hell would want to sit through this shit? Well, I got to admit when I was wrong, this show far su <laughs> superiorly exceeded my very, very low expectations. This match was good. This match was a lot of fun. And it wasn't just good and a lot of fun because of my really low expectations. Because again, it far, far exceeded them. This match was a whole hell of a lot better than frankly it had any business being. And that's the truth. It was a good match because it was a good match. I love so much about this. I like how Big Show was trying to sit there in the early stages and emphasize that he's a giant. He doesn't need any of this bullshit. But then he ends up trying to use the bullshit. You know, I like how you have Roman Reigns dish out a punishment but also take a punishment. And he's not winning just in a Super Cena type of fashion. This was good. This was a lot of fun. And again, like I said, had... No business being as good as it actually was. And some people could maybe make an argument that this was actually the match of the night. And I also wouldn't give them a lot of grief. You know, Roman Reigns goes over here. It was nice to see the Chicago crowd by the end of the match actually getting behind Roman Reigns and somewhat celebratory that he had won. So they did the job that needed to be done here. And I had a lot of fun watching this. This might have been my favorite match of the night. I think a lot of people were expecting Ryback to appear on this pay-per-view and have Bray Wyatt go after him, and then they were going to start a little piece of business. We really didn't get that. We got him going after Bo Dallas, and it's still a shame how they missed the boat on Bo Dallas because he could have been so much more as that you know heel, accidental, you know dominant figure. He really could have been so much more than what they made him out to be. They just lost faith in him. And frankly, at times they've lost faith in Ryback, and I just can't understand why they don't do more with Ryback, why they don't give him a bigger spotlight, because the guy gets a reaction, and the guy, I believe, can move merch. This is a guy that can be a decent-sized star for them, and maybe that's what they'll get out of him going after going with Bray Wyatt. Who knows? I was kind of surprised, yes, that they didn't incorporate Bray Wyatt really in any way on this show. I thought they should have. You know, he just finished working with Undertaker, so what's the best way to feature him is not have him on the next pay-per-view, of course. I was looking forward to Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins in the steel cage for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, even though I had the feeling that I knew who was going to win. You know, I maybe didn't know everywhere in terms of how they were going to get to that point. But you pretty much, I think, knew and expected that Seth Rollins was going to win here. But I was still looking forward to it. I think the issue between them is good. The performers and their chemistry together is potentially good. So I thought it had the makings of being a legitimate WWE pay-per-view main event title match. Now, the funny thing is... Is that about, I think, maybe five to ten minutes, I can't really remember exactly when it happened, into this match, I fell asleep. Now, was that necessarily an indication of the match itself? I don't know. May, was it in part me kind of tapping out for the night because I knew where this was going to go with Kane based on the way they had been featuring him throughout the night? Perhaps. Could have been just more so the fact of uh, the 10-mile run and the other three-plus hours worth of working out I had done throughout Sunday finally caught up to me about 10.30 at night. That's probably most likely what happened. So when I finally woke up from my slumber <laughs> and turned it back on, I was kind of a little bit disappointed. I was like, hmm. I knew where it was going in terms of the cane part, and I figured he was going to play a big part in this. You know, th this match was kind of cluster. It could have been a whole lot more than what it really was. But you had to know that this wasn't going to be the end of the issue for Orton and Rollins. And you knew that they were going to probably throw Kane into the mix here. And I get that some of the complaints about this is that they don't really feel like fans don't feel like there was much of a conclusion to this show. That it was just all about continuation to payback. Well, in a lot of cases with a lot of these shows, a lot of them aren't about finishing off business. They're just about advancing a storyline or creating a new arc to a story. That's what happens a lot of time at WrestleMania. And that's oftentimes why Extreme Rules is better than WrestleMania, in my opinion, is because you get more culminations. You get more blow-off matches. Things come to a head there more than they actually do at Mania. Um, yeah, this could have been more... 
And I've seen some people talk about how they felt like this was a Raw main event, and I frankly got to kind of agree with them based off of the match itself, based off the way the story advanced, based off of the finish. It kind of was a Raw main event. It was a little disappointing, not incredibly disappointing. I was hoping it was going to be better. I was dreading how much Kane was going to be involved. I was dreading the potential train wreck it was going to be. I probably should be more pissed off about this main event than, frankly, I am. But maybe this was one of these instances where, yeah, you just kind of knew what was going to happen, and it didn't really deviate from kind of what you thought was going to happen, so you just kind of live with it. So as far as Extreme Rules 2013, I'll stick to my guns in saying that I thought this show was wrestle better than WrestleMania 31 on several different levels. In terms of a show execution standpoint, in terms of the flow and presentation of the show standpoint, in terms of the actual matches on the card. You know, I just like this show more than WrestleMania 31. I thought this show had more fun factor. And that's the way I look at this show. I enjoyed watching it. It was fun. At a time where I need fun out of the WWE, I need to be able to enjoy something that they give me, I was able to at least find a way to enjoy this. Look, I thought the show was good. It was, you know, maybe middle-of-the-road filler type of pay-per-view about what you expect. That's fine. I don't think this was terrible. I really don't. I'm not going to sit here and say it was terrible just for the sake of continuing some type of stereotype or belief that some of you have about me that I'm always negative about everything pertaining to the WWE. In this particular case... I enjoyed the show. I need more fun factor. I really enjoyed the tag title match. I enjoyed that last man standing match far more than I ever fucking expected. The Divas match, once I, you know, even though I could never figure out what the hell they were doing in terms of the booking, it was solid. You know, Barrett and Neville on the pre-show was really good. It had some really good matches on the show. It was fun. It flowed well. It was easy to watch. I liked at least some of the effort they put forth with Ambrose and Harper in their street fight. I mean, yeah, it could be a lot better. And I'm still really pissed off about the streaming issues because, again, that's unacceptable. And maybe if I was in a worse mood, that would lead me to poon this entire fucking show. And frankly, I would have every right to because I'm paying for a service that isn't fucking working when it's supposed to fucking work. WWE needs to fix this shit. It's not my shit that's the problem. It's their shit that's the problem. The only thing that I have issues with in terms of streaming is WWE's network. And the only time I have those issues is during the fucking pay-per-views. They need to get their shit together. It's embarrassing. You know, they give you the free month to new subscribers in April. Well, thank God you probably did because imagine how many people would be pissed off and they have the same issues streaming it that I fucking did. And I actually pay for the shit. You know, I expect it to work. You know, like I said, if I was in a worse mood and I didn't have so much fun watching certain things on the show, I'd have probably pooned and buried this fucking show too, in large part because of those streaming issues, because that's a huge problem and it's something that needs to get fixed and WWE needs to get their shit together on.